Hello, it's Sunday, August 11th, and we are going to get started right away on this yin yoga routine. Please join me. Hopefully you can see all of what I'm demonstrating. Hello. We'll see. Please hit that like button. That's always helpful. And let's get right into this yin yoga practice. We are going to start in Savasana, corpse pose. Setting our intentions for this practice, focus on what you want to bring into your life and what you're needing to let go of in order to allow that change and shift. We're going to remain in this corpse pose for a minute while we're setting our intentions. Your intentions can be anything from wanting to have a restful, relaxing workout to wanting to change the world, anything in between. And those are both allowed simultaneous too, of course. Yin practice is a very unique type of yoga where you get into your poses for a much longer period of time than most other yoga practices. So it's important that you don't push yourself to your fullest extent in each stretch. You find your edge and then you back off slightly. We're going to start out with preparing to do five deep belly breaths. You'll put your hands on your tummy like you're filling a balloon with air or you're nine months pregnant or maybe you just swallowed a basketball. Inhaling through your nose and exhaling through your mouth five times. We're going to continue to stay in this corpse pose for another minute. Slowly we'll rotate our head and neck to the right, looking over the right shoulder. Slowly rotate your head and neck back to neutral. And then looking out over your left shoulder. And back to neutral. Let's stretch out long hands over head. Pointing your toes. Then we're going to hug our right knee for several breaths. You can engage the foot, flex your heel, rotate your ankle, point your toe. Continue hugging that knee, paying close attention to the micro movements and the compression in your right hip socket. Then we're going to reach for the canvas strap, getting the canvas to go across the ball of your right foot and then straightening out your leg. You can pull that leg just a little closer to your chest and hold there. swing that leg out to the right you can keep 
your foot in the strap or you can do this without the strap if you like. So we're going to hold this half straddle for a few breaths. Then set your strap down, lower your right leg back down to your mat. Switching your legs, hug your left knee. Again, engage the foot and the ankle by flexing the heel, pointing the toes, rotating the ankle. Hugging your left knee tight for another minute. Again, pay attention to the micro movements and focus on that compression in your left hip socket. Now pick up your strap again, place it across the ball of your left foot, straightening that leg and holding it there. Pulling that leg just slightly closer to your chest and you can bend that knee slightly if you wish. You can straighten it, you can do a little bit of both. Hold that leg out to the left side with or without the strap for the half straddle on the left. It's a big stretch in your thigh muscle. Just getting warmed up. Then set your strap aside, lower that leg back down to the mat. Both legs are out straight, stretching long, arms up overhead, and then hug both of your knees tightly. Continue holding your right knee while you lower that left leg down to the mat. And maybe with a bolster, place the right knee onto the left side of your body for the supine twist. Arms are in a T. Stay in the supine twist for a minute, keeping your drishti over your right fingertips. You have the option to use your left hand to apply a light pressure to your right knee if you wish. Just enjoy this twist. your gaze over your right fingertips and again applying a light pressure with your left fingertips to your right knee if you wish then we're going to slowly turn the head and the neck to look to the left for two full breaths And slowly turn the head and the neck back to the right. And then back to neutral. Lower your right leg back down to the floor, hugging in both of your knees together. Head and neck towards the knees rocking and rolling, and then lowering the right leg to the floor while continuing to hug your left knee tightly. Bring that left knee across your body to place it on the floor on the right side, 
or a bolster or a pillow. For the supine twist to the right, arms are in a T again. We're going to maintain this pose for a minute, keeping your gaze out over your left fingertips and using your right hand, you can apply that light pressure to the left knee at any point. Twists are so good on so many levels, good for your digestion, good for your spine. Good for everything, in my opinion. Just enjoy that twist. Then slowly you're gonna turn your head and your neck to look out over the right shoulder. Hold your gaze there for two full breaths. Then turning your head and neck to look over your left shoulder again, over your left fingertips. And then back to neutral. Lower that left leg down to the floor, coming out of the twist. And then hug both knees again, stretching the neck, rotating both ankles, engaging the feet, flexing the heels, pointing your toes. We're going to get into reclined butterfly. You may want to bolster under your knees. Arms are down by your sides, palms are facing to the sky, surrendering to your practice. Then gently glide your arms out to the sides and overhead, arching them into a half moon to the steeple grip. We'll hold the steeple grip for a few breaths. Then you're going to glide your arms back down to your sides like butterfly wings. Hands or palms are facing up again. And then you're going to slowly bring those arms back up overhead, touching the fingertips to each other. With your arms overhead outstretched, fingers and thumbs touching, stay in the butterfly pose for another breath. You might want to remove the bolster if you have one. And then we're going to do reclined tree pose on each side. First, straighten out your left leg and keep the sole of your right foot against the inseam of your left thigh above the knee if you can prayer hands overhead holding this for several breaths then simply switch sides straightening out your right leg placing the sole of your left foot to the inseam of your right thigh above the knee arms are still in prayer hands overhead or you can branch your arms out goal post your arms steeple grip yogi's choice Then reach for the strap, 
We're going to get it across the balls of both feet for legs up the wall. Knees can be straight or bent slightly. You can pedal out your knees one at a time. You can rock, you can roll, you can wiggle, anything you wish. Continue to keep your left foot in the strap on the ball of the foot and take your right foot, place it across your left thigh for reclined pigeon. We're going to hold this for about a minute. Bending that left knee slightly is an option or keeping it straight or some of each, straightening it and bending it. Always take good care of your knees. Don't do anything that hurts. If you need to back off, then back off. Good to keep your knees flexible, but you never want to overdo it. Then we're going to switch out our feet, getting your right foot back into that strap and removing your left foot, placing that foot across your right thigh for the reclined pigeon on the other side. We will hold this for another minute or so. Again, you can bend the knee, straighten it, or both, a little bit of both, mix it up. whatever your body is asking for. set the strap down to the side, lay flat. We're going to do three honey bumblebee breaths. We've got our three fingers on our closed eyelids, our ring finger, middle finger, and index finger. Thumbs are on your ear cartilage, pressing down on that tragus to close off the airway into your ears. Breathing in through your nose and out through the nose. We're going to hum low pitch three times as we breathe out. After that, we're going to turn over, slowly turning yourself to the left or to the right. You're going to flip over to lay prone on your front side. You can rest your forehead on your hands, laying on top of each other. Give yourself a minute as we prepare to do another twist.
We're going to come up onto the elbows and forearms into a sphinx. And then hike up the right knee with your right arm out in front of you. With your left arm, thread the needle, making any adjustments for the pose as you need to get into the supine twist once again. You can simply place your right hand onto your right hip, or you can straighten out that right arm, try to lay it flat on the ground with both shoulders flat, or just keeping that right hand on the right hip. At any point, you can use your left hand to apply that slight pressure to your right knee, keeping your gaze out over your right shoulder. Feel the difference from the last supine twist, having gotten into this pose from an entirely different series of prompts and directives. Also feel the similarities along with those differences. When you are ready to come out of this twist, you can rest your head on your hands again, laying them on top of one another for several breaths. And then bending your knees, windshield wiper your feet and calves. And then lower those feet down to the mat coming back up onto your forearms and elbows and hands into the Sphinx pose again. And then hike your left knee up to the left side with your left arm out in front of you, thread your right arm through the needle. Then you can place your left hand on your left hip. Same as the other side, you can adjust yourself so that both shoulders and arms are flat on the ground in a T or simply keep your left hand on your left hip. Option again to apply that light pressure with the right hand, if you wish, on your left knee, keeping your gaze over your left shoulder. If your arms are in a T, then over your left fingertips. Again, notice the similarities and the differences from the last time you were in supine twist and even just from one side to the other. Pay attention to any micro movements. And as you come out of this twist, rest your head on your hands again. And in an exaggerated motion, really windshield wiper those feet and knees, loosening the hips out. Then lower the feet to the ground and we'll send our hips back towards the feet, getting into a wide knee child pose. You can use a block, a bolster, or a pillow to rest your forehead or torso on. We're going to hold this position for a full minute, really relaxing the torso, feeling that stretch in the small of your back. Just lean into it. Ragdolling the upper portion of your body, allowing gravity to do this work for you. When you're done, remove the prop if you have one. And then we're going to come into tabletop. 
and lowering back down into sphinx on your elbows and forearms again this time spreading your hands and your fingers out as wide as you can holding that sphinx pose tall and then turn your right forearm to be parallel with the top of your mat reaching back for your left foot with your left hand we're going to hold this half bow for several breaths You can continue to just stay in the half bow, or if you'd like, you have an option here to reach your right hand for your right foot for full bow pose. It's a tough one, so it's a work in progress. Or if you're not comfortable doing that, you can just remain in that half bow. <sighs> Letting go of your foot or feet, rest your head on your hands again, one hand on top of the other, and windshield wiper those feet, loosening out your hips again, lower the feet back down to the floor, and then the same thing on the other side. Come up into Sphinx, spreading the hands and fingers out as wide as you can, sitting tall, Then turning your left forearm parallel to the top of the mat, reaching back with your right hand to hold your right foot, engaging in the half bow for several breaths. And again, you can opt to stay, remain in this half bow or if you'd like to try to reach your left hand to your left foot for the full bow, you can work on that. one or both feet, both of your feet are back down on the mat. And again, you're going to send your hips back to your feet into child's pose. Sitting on your feet, you can rest your forehead on a block. We're going to be here for an extended period. Enjoy this stretch. Take several breaths here. Deep breaths. Really feel the loosening in the small of your back. And then we're going to walk our fingers or slide our hands to the right edge of the mat, reaching for that right corner. Feeling the stretch across the lower left ribs. And then sliding or walking your hands and fingers back to neutral. And then over to the left edge of the mat, reaching towards that left corner, focusing the extension in the lower right ribs holding there for several breaths. Before gliding or walking the fingers back to neutral. Really ragged all that torso. Breathe into it. slowly we're going to come up into hero's pose 
This is a tough one for a lot of people. As simple as it looks, you might want a block to sit your bum on. We're going to pause here for a few moments in the hero's pose. You can have your hands on your thighs, on your knees. If you'd like, you can experiment with wheel, reaching your hands back to each of your heels, or you can just remain in hero's pose for another minute. Do what's comfortable for your body. And then we're going to get the legs around in front of you for staff pose. And we're going to stack some pillows and props on top of the legs, piling on the bolster or the blocks or the pillows so that you can ragdoll your upper body over your legs, resting your torso on the props. Alternatively, you can use the strap on the balls of your feet for the same type of effect here. We're going to hold this for an extended period, really leaning into it. Envision tilting your hips towards your feet, towards your toes, allowing gravity to do the work for you. Focus on easing your weight forward, trusting that gravitational pull to completely support you. As we hold these poses for a couple of minutes, it can be like peeling an onion. You get to a whole new level. You might want to shift your weight around, just easing into it. Holding the pose for an extended period like that really allows the oxygen to get into your bloodstream, into your muscles, relaxing the fascia. It's very cleansing. It's very good for you. I like to say it's like a nap, but better. And you really feel it. It really stays with you. When we're done with that, we're going to remove the props, keep your left leg stretched out long and bring the right foot to the inseam of your left thigh, reaching for your left toes, holding for several breaths. You might have your left toes in your left hand with your right hand reaching over the foot, or maybe you're holding the left toes with both hands or if you can't quite reach, then just holding your leg wherever is comfortable. Relaxing into it. Then coming up to neutral, we'll get into a wide straddle stretch and lean forward for a couple of deep breaths. And switch it out to the other side, 
left foot to the inner right thigh. Right leg is stretched out long. Reach for those right toes with your right hand. With both hands, we're going to hold this stretch for several more breaths. Again, if you can't reach your toes, just your ankle or wherever is comfortable for you. And coming up into neutral, we're going to stretch both legs out to a wide straddle again. Leaning forward, you can either reach out in front of you or you might want to rest your forehead on a couple of blocks stacked on top of each other. We're going to hold for several breaths. Then we're going to come into the seated butterfly, holding the soles of your feet together with both hands, pushing knees towards the floor, bending your neck and head towards your feet. And then slowly rise your head up to neutral. We're going to twist the head and neck from side to side to the right, looking over that right shoulder. Slowly back to neutral. Then to the left, looking over the left shoulder. And back to neutral. Stretch the neck down rolling it out in small movements from side to side. You can turn your head back and forth like you're indicating no. You can nod your head up and down as if acknowledging a yes. If you're comfortable, you can do a full circle rotation to one direction and then a full circle rotation to the other. Then bring your head up to neutral before shifting into easy pose. And then drop your right ear to your right shoulder. You have the option here to use a light pressure with your right fingertips on top of your head. If you want, you can move the head slightly back and forth to massage out your neck muscles. And then get your head and your neck back to neutral before dropping your left ear to your left shoulder. And again, with that slight pressure with your left fingertips, if you wish, moving the head and neck slightly back and forth and then back to neutral when you're done with that. Again, slowly turn your head and neck all the way to the right. And then back to neutral. Slowly head and neck to the left. And then back to neutral. And now we're going to bring ourselves into a wide straddle, again, leaning forward. You may want to use the blocks in front of you to rest your forehead on again, as we will hold for an extended period.
really lean into this. Allowing the gravity to do the work for you once again. You can pick up the blocks in each of your hands, reaching over to the left foot, placing each of those blocks on either side of your foot to rest your hands on each one of them or reaching for your toes. Remain here for several breaths. Again, leaning into it and allowing the gravity to do the work for you. And pick up the blocks and place them on either side of your right foot, reaching for your toes. Again, you can rest your hands on the blocks, or you can reach for your toes, or a little bit of both. Just leaning into it and letting gravity do its magic. We're gonna come back to neutral and our next pose will be bending our right knee over our left leg extended out long. Twisting to the right, gazing at the back of the room. The right hand or fist is on the floor behind you. Arm is supporting your torso. Using your left elbow to leverage on the right knee. Really feel this twist. Pay attention to your shoulders and your spine and your posture. Slowly, we're going to turn the head and the neck to the front of the room, looking over the left shoulder. Then slowly, we're going to return the head and the neck to be gazing over the right shoulder once again to the back of the room all while leveraging that left elbow on the right knee. And then coming out of this twist, we'll simply switch sides, bending the left knee over the right leg extended out long. Left hand or fist on the floor behind you, gazing over your left shoulder towards the back of the room. Leveraging your right arm against the left knee. Feeling that twist. Again, paying attention to your shoulders, your spine, your posture.
continuing to leverage that right elbow on the left knee. Keeping your gaze over that left shoulder to the back wall as far as you can see. Slowly, we're going to turn the gaze over the right shoulder to the front of the room. And slowly returning your gaze to the back of the room over your left shoulder again, continuing to leverage that right elbow on the left knee. And then back to neutral and into the butterfly, holding the soles of your feet together with your hands, pressing those knees down towards the floor, bending the head and the neck forward. And then keep your posture as if a string were being pulled from above, from the top of your head, coming up to neutral, turn the head and neck to the right, back to neutral, and then to the left, and back to neutral. We're now going to get into Lord of the Fish. Bending the right knee over the left knee for cow face. Holding each of your feet in each of your hands. And then twisting to the right. Right arm is in back of you. The left elbow leverages against the right knee. Looking to the back of the room. Slowly, we're going to turn the head and the neck to the opposite side. Looking out over the left shoulder. And then slowly turning the head and neck to be looking back over the right shoulder again. And then coming to neutral, and we're going to straighten both legs out in front for staff pose. Reaching your arms out to the sides, and then arching them in a half moon up to the sky. Interlacing your fingers, turning your hands outwards, pressing the palms towards the sky, reaching tall and then bending forward, reaching towards your toes. Coming up, we will prepare to switch legs for cow face on the other side, the left knee over the right bent knee, holding both feet. And then twisting to the left for Lord of the Fish, on that other side, right arm is leveraging against the right, or sorry, right arm is leveraging against the left knee, looking over the left shoulder to the back of the room. Continue leveraging your elbow on the knee and then slowly turning the gaze to be looking over the right shoulder.
slowly returning the gaze to be looking back over the left shoulder. And then you can bring your head back to neutral as you come out of this twist, returning to staff pose, reaching the arms out wide, legs out in front, making a half moon arch, touching your hands overhead, and then reaching for your toes. As you come up to neutral, transition into easy pose. Reach your arms out to the sides and then up for the half moon arch, touching hands together for prayer hands before getting into cactus arms, preparing for eagle arms with the right elbow over the left elbow, hands together, pushing elbows slightly up, bending head and neck down. Feel that stretch across your neck and your shoulder blades. And then very slowly begin looking up as high as you can, moving your elbows and arms with your head as you lean your neck slightly back, pushing your eagle arms towards the sky. And then coming back to neutral, we're unpretzel the arms, reaching the arms back out wide again, arching them up in another half moon, touching the hands together for the prayer hands, back to cactus, and again, eagle arms with the left elbow over the right elbow this time, pushing the elbows up slightly, bending the head and neck down. Really enjoying that stretch in the neck and the shoulder blades again. And then slowly you can look up, moving your arms and your head all together, pushing the eagle arms up and leaning your neck back slightly. And then coming back to neutral, unpretzeling ourselves again, stretching the arms out wide to the sides, bringing them up overhead and another half moon arch to steeple grip, sitting tall, then keeping your left hand up high, reach your right hand behind you for a nice twist to the right and then we'll bring that right hand back up to meet the left in the steeple grip again before reaching the left hand back behind you for another nice twist to the left And then bringing that left hand back to meet the right hand for steeple grip. And then we will let go of that and lay down on your back. Planting both feet on the floor, knees bent. You'll probably want to hold a block or a pillow in between your knees and maybe another one on each side of you so that you can allow your knees to fall to the right. Arms are in a T, focusing the gaze out over the left fingertips. Just enjoy this simple stretch. Sometimes the simple ones are the best ones.
You can bring your knees to neutral and then allow the legs to fall to the left. Looking out over your right fingertips, keeping your arms in the T. simple twist you can return your knees to neutral remove the props hug in both knees bending the head and neck towards the knees engaging your feet flexing your heels Pointing your toes and rotating your ankles. And then plant both feet firmly on the mat again. Put your right knee over your left knee, allowing your legs to fall to your right. Arms are in a T, gazing over your left fingertips. This is my absolute favorite of all the twists. I really love them all, but this one really does it for me. You can bring your head to neutral and your knees to neutral, unpretzeling the knees, hugging them to your chest, rocking and rolling. And then plant those feet firmly back onto the mat for the other side, left knee over the right knee, falling the legs to the left, arms are in a T with your gaze over your right fingertips. Enjoy this twist this final twist. You're going to release your knees back up to neutral, hugging in both of your knees one more time, rocking and rolling. And then if you would like to, here you have an option for the happy baby. 
if you're not wanting to do happy baby, you can do whatever stretches you like, or you can meet us in the supported bridge, which is where we're heading next. But if you're doing the happy baby, you might want to rock the baby, alternating, straightening, and slightly bending each knee. Just moving around in it, noticing what makes your baby happy. And then as we come out of the happy baby, we will lay flat and then reaching for a block for supported bridge. Plant the feet firmly on the mat, lift the hips, slide a block under the small of your back on its lowest level as recommended. We're going to remain in supported bridge for a full minute. Just relaxing, allowing gravity to do its wonderful, magical work, allowing the prop to support your body. Then while you're still on the block, you can reach for your strap for legs up the wall, or you can do legs up the wall without the strap if you wish. When we're done with that, you'll set the strap to the side, remove the block, and if it's in your practice, there's an option here for a shoulder stand and the plow. You can take a couple of minutes to do these, or again, Yogi's Choice, any stretch that you would like, or feel free to get into corpse pose early. That's where we are headed next. Should you be in a shoulder stand, point your toes tall. Maybe scissor your legs long or any other movements that you're inclined. Flexing your heels. Maybe bending one knee, bending the other knee. Eventually transitioning into the plow. <laughs> if you're coming out of the plow, slow and controlled with your chin tucked one vertebrae at a time, roll yourself down to the floor to relax into Savasana. Once here, remember the intentions you set at the beginning of this practice. Thank yourself for taking the time out of your day 
to focus on you and your well-being. What is it that you're cultivating more of in your life? What is it that you want to relinquish or let go of to allow the space for that to occur? As we bring our awareness back into the room and into our bodies, you can opt to either roll to one side or the other and just rest there for a few breaths before then slowly pushing yourself to sit up, slowly, slowly. Or if it's comfortable for you, there's an option here to slightly with your chin tucked come up onto both elbows slightly rocking yourself and then straightening your arms out behind you and then as you come up transitioning into easy pose either way we will meet in easy pose And we're going to get the left hand on the right knee, right hand on the floor behind you, lightly twisting to the right, crossing your right arm over your left arm, your right hand onto your right knee, and then reaching at your left hand behind you for another light twist. Then crossing that left arm over the right, hugging yourself in this basket shape. Before then placing each of your hands on each of your knees, your right hand on your right knee, your left hand on your left knee, touching your pointer fingers to your thumbs. We're going to chant three times in a low pitch ohm as we breathe out.
then stretching the arms out wide for that half moon arch. Bring the arms up overhead to prayer hands. And then to acknowledge your insight and wisdom, touch your thumbs or your knuckles to your third eye on your way to hands over heart. Before reaching the arms out wide once more for one last half moon arch, prayer hands overhead, and then slowly lowering those prayer hands to hands over heart before then bowing to close and seal the practice. And so it is. I thank you for practicing with me today. Be well and enjoy a very blessed rest of your day. See you soon. I hope you're digging it like I am. See you on the next one.